Welcome back everybody. So today we are doing another install um, for the 2019 X3 XRC uh, 64 inch 120 model. Uh, if you're just tuning in and you haven't seen, we've got the RR build, the 2021 RR build, but then we've also got some stuff that we've put up about the 2019 XRC. So Today is a nice and not sunny, but not raining. It's about 70 degrees in February. Mother Nature's playing games. But anyways, so what we got going on is, is we took a trip out, I think in January, just rolling out, and somehow I bent a radius rod. Don't know how, so this one right here, I'll kind of bent up. No significant amount of damage that I know of besides that so we got some new parts we're gonna get this thing fixed up run through the install of um, getting these radius rods changed out because if you have seen before i have these super atv trailing arms uh had installed those not a big fan of super atv but the price point and you know everything that was going on at the time they were looking good so far they've held up but i haven't got to ride it very much so just to make it real quick, if you're just tuning in, subscribe. Uh, if you are a subscriber, hit that like button. Um, notifications, you get notified for any future videos that we post up. Helps us a lot. Merchandise link below. I'm not going to be annoying and keep on and on and on. So, what we're going to do, we're going to do some unboxing. Show you guys some parts. So, right now, here we go. Whoa. cracked the tape uh, I have not pulled these out and looked at them yet so I don't even know if I have the right order but hopefully I do so let's shut these out and see what we got in the box so you can see this LM UTV so you might ask on the 2021 RR build we did some the did the radius rods on it um, and I did the L and W stuff so I really did like the L and W I do they are one of my favorites uh, because of the style and the price the significant price difference I've talked to that about that before but the problem was is L and W only makes stuff for the 72 inch so, um, the LM UTV, when I, on the same weekend that I bent this radius rod, I had made a post uh, about radius rods, and a gentleman stepped in and said, Hey, look, LM UTV is having a sale. Um, I end up getting this entire set for, I think it was $550. So this wasn't, no powder coated. Pull these out and look at them. I'll lay them all out here in a second. Um, they were not powder coated. They're raw. I was gonna have to wait a little, uh, a little bit of extra time to get them coated. I didn't wanna wait, but I didn't know that I was going to be, it was gonna take me this long to install it. So I would've got them coated. I would've got them uh, powder coated blue to match the machine. The uh, 2019 XRC blue, uh, octane blue, I think is what they call it. So, yeah. So the, the the only problem that I got, and this is just personal preference. I don't know that there's anything wrong with them, um, personally. But like I'm saying, it's personal preference. Is the the adjustable hind joints. So I'm not a really big fan of adjustable hind joints. And reason being is, is on the race car stuff in the past, um, hind joints, the, it seems like the threaded portion uh, fails. You know, no matter what, that's going to be like your biggest failure point is it's going to break, it's going to snap. Like the one solid piece all the way across, some of these aren't adjustable, but one solid piece all the way across to me 
has a whole lot more stability, uh, is not as prone to breaking. I know I'm, I'm fairly positive that they had posted that they had a lifetime warranty on these if you have any problems. Um, as I've stated about parts before, I don't have uh, a problem with the lifetime warranty. I love it, it's awesome. But my problem comes into play um, if I'm out on the trail and it breaks. If it breaks out there, that warranty's not doing anything for me trying to get me out of there. So that's always something that's in the back of my mind. Um, I, I'm sure a lot of people are like that. So that's personal preference. But the price point on these was really good. Um, I think, like I said, shift, tax, and everything. I think they were like 550 bucks. Uh, the LM UTV uh, tax shifting straight to my door within like two days. Or uh, the L and W stuff was like 750, and these were 550. I just went ahead and jumped on them. I figured, why not? We'll try them out. We'll give them a shot. Definitely, definitely a step upgrade. Big step upgrade from like Super ATV and whatnot. Um, has the curvature that you need for your high clearance. I'll have to figure out which one is which. It kind of sucks um, when the the L and W stuff was like this too. Um, I just quickly looking through the packaging. None of these are marked. Wait. Oh yeah, they are marked. All right. So this one's marked. It says passenger side, chassis side, uh, driver side, chassis side. Well, that's pretty cool. That's awesome of them. So that's a bonus. Um, this one doesn't say. I don't see it on it. Let's look at this one. Mm, I don't see it on that one. Maybe there's not a difference. Doesn't matter. This one. This one's not marked. I don't see anything on it about it. Mm. And this one's not marked. It has numbers on it. Uh, let's see. It says 2, 3, M. Yeah, so the numbers and stuff are the same. Right rear, right rear. I don't know. So the only ones that's marked is these. That's a plus side, but I don't know which one's... I don't know which one's bottom, which one's top, which one's middle. That is crucial for anybody that's new to doing this, uh, which one's which. Um, also, with the adjustable hind joints, uh, you're supposed to measure, match these up and measure them out with the existing radius rods. But if your radius rods are bent, how are you going to get an accurate me uh, measurement? So, well, let's get to it. Let's start the install. If I have any uh, notations, I'll stop along the way and I'll point it out and tell you guys. Um, first time doing this on the 64 uh, with these. So, this will be my honest opinion. So we have arrived at checkpoint of information number one. Now, as I was saying, I don't know what goes where. Um, I know that this one right here, both of these had an engraving on the back. One that said chassis, and one that said wheel. So those were pretty easy to figure out. The LMUTV logo points outwards towards the wheel now here's where it came into play of not knowing where this one went and where that one went so basically i just studied the pictures that they had posted on their website um like i said again not bashing them there's really no company that i have read and researched so far it tells you which one is which any type of measurements they just throw them at you so just to go over these real quick the only engravings that are on these is these numbers right here. Let's see if I can focus. It's the same thing on the other one, so there's no difference in numbers. And on the top ones have these numbers too. There's no difference in those. So looking at their pictures, hopefully those were correct. I figured out this one with the extreme bends goes on the very bottom. The next one, uh, this one right here with the less less of a bend radius as these they uh, go on the middle radius rod there is an adjustable right here 
um, which I might, I don't know if I'm going to have a problem. I'm going to compare the other side because it don't look bent. This one is bent, so maybe the measurements will be off. I hope not. Anyways, comparing on their picture, there is a small, the, the, the cutout or whatever, the millings, there's a small one, which is on the chassis side. And then the longer pocket, which is on the wheel side. The, the pocket for the top radius rod, per their pictures, is outwards. There is no pocket on this side. So, that's how I'm going to install them. Hopefully that's the way they're supposed to be installed. Now, between the top ones, I see no difference. So, I don't know. One would be left, one would be right. You know, you swap it over this way. Swap it around to the other side. So... I don't see a difference in those, so they could be either or. So, let's start on this install. Alrighty, so that took a little bit longer than expected. My uh, impact battery died as I was starting, and my other impact is not here right now. So, if you have never removed radius rods before, these nuts on here are 18 millimeters, um, 18 millimeter socket, 18 millimeter wrench. As you see with pry bars, uh, there's two pieces there. Uh, I used pry bars to kind of wiggle that off there. It was a tight fit. Um, I have never checked these before and there was a couple of them that was loose. So that could be a contributing factor to why one got bent, I don't know. Also, let's see, we'll move to this side. There is 18 millimeter, 18 millimeter, 18 millimeter. Now there is an 18 millimeter nut on the back side here and an 18 millimeter on the back side here. I don't know if you can get to see that. Show you where the bolt comes out. So it's right back in here. So on the inside of the knuckle, right here that is a 19 millimeter and it's the same thing on the other side so what i'm going to start doing now is um i'm going to start with the bottom radius rod since it is fixed i'm going to leave the other ones attached and i'm going to start with the bottom one and change one at a time and see how this works out Well, my method plan of attack didn't work out so well because whenever I pulled out this bottom radius rod, the arm kicked and I figured I would just go ahead and do one at a time, starting at the top, going to the bottom. Now, if you will look at this radius rod, this is start, starting with the top one. How I am lining them up, I have seen done before, is I pulled out the factory radius rod, which is not bent, doesn't seem to be bent, and I'm matching it up with it. So I bottomed them both out all the way in. So I would turn it either a half a revolution or a whole revolution on one side and then the other side to make sure that the hind joints were equal length. I'm assuming this is correct. This is what I've done with cars before. Now the sucky part is, is in order to adjust these, you have to take them off of the machine. You can't twist them how you see fit like a like a normal car where they have this running into a joint and then into this and then you could just turn that and it does all the work and you don't have to pull them off the car so that's one downside uh trying to make them set right i'm sure trying to pull one radius rod off to adjust it is an absolute pain in the ass so there's that uh as you notice i ran the bolts through them it's the bolts that i actually pulled out of the radius rods that came out of there to use them to line up. So we're gonna start with this one and then we will go to the next one. With the middle radius rod, I use the same method. There's only one hind joint on it. Uh, on the outside going towards the wheel. So I use the same method measured it out um, just adjusting that ran a bolt through it made sure it was secured put a little tension on that 
lock nut there. Uh, one thing that I did do, it was easier to set these bolts in these first and then attempt to get them on here. Now what I did real quick, I just ran the nut back on there. You don't need the pull plate for that. Just ran the nut back on there to hold the other stud because you got one plate, two plate, and three plates in there. So to keep that from moving back and forth, I secured the other side and then I was easy to just bloop, slide it right on. Now, something that I forgot to do at the beginning of the video and realized that I needed to do is, is I always take a piece of tape and wrap around my radius rods and mark the passenger side top passenger side middle passenger side bottom also did the same thing for the driver's side as you can see on these that way if I ever have to replace them or need to know and I don't get them mixed up during the install it takes you literally less than a minute to run some tape around them and a sharpie and get it all knocked out that way you're not scratching your head later on in the process so let's put the bottom one on and see how it does bottom one kind of sucked to getting it on um, so I figured out this was a trick on all three of these I actually found it easier because I have when I did the super ATV arm install I'd take the radius rods off obviously and it was a pain in the ass to get them all lined back up and get them back on and I did the radius rods on that one right there and that was definitely a two-person job and it sucked um, my buddy got hit in the face with a ratchet because we were trying to figure it out but doing it by myself had to be a little bit smarter so i put the top one on first put it on in here first then wiggled it around and got it seated up there then the second one let's see sorry working with my gimbal here so i got that one on first then put that one on and put a bolt on the other side uh, to keep that plate secured and then with this one I just took the jack because when you take the bottom one off this whole arm will twist so I took the jack put it underneath it and it started to twist it back and lined it back up with that and then bada bing bada boom bada pow so I'm gonna get this other side knocked out I'm gonna stop uh, if I have anything that I need to talk about I'll stop and put it in a video but for right now it's basically the same thing different side and we're gonna get it knocked out finished product I am going to throw the wheels back on torque those down check the air pressure and stuff in them uh, torque all these down I've already tightened my three bolts over there I have tightened these right here uh, here's one thing that I don't like about heim joints and a fun fact that I figured out so this right here a 27 millimeter wrench will fit right there just perfect so that you can tighten this now this is a 24 now problem with the 24 this top hind joint up here is really bad awkward to get to and tighten down binds with the trailing arm i'm sure it's about like that with the factory one this one's not a problem this one up here is not a problem that one's good that one's good that one getting your 24 millimeter wrench in there to get to that that's a problem so the bottom ones are non-adjustable we've got them secured we're ready to rock and roll so that brings me to the end of this um, we still have some more stuff to do on the 2019 um, if you're watching the end of this episode I tried to work on these on New Year's Got some lower control arms for them so on the next episode i am going to be swapping those out because i have a bent one i've been riding on a bent one it's not bad 
It's just the second one I've had to replace, and I'm not doing it anymore. It's a pain in the ass. So, anyways, here we go. Like, subscribe, uh, share. Share the shit out of this. Share it on Facebook. Just anywhere. Just share it. Send it to some random person. Just share it. Say, hey, watch this video. And if you're that random person, you made it to the end, go ahead and subscribe. Drop us a like. Drop us a comment. Uh, merchandise store. Yada, yada, yada. See you guys on the next episode. Peace out.